hi and welcome to our I think it's our fifth video from Allen High School talking about atomic structure at the pre-AP chemistry level now what we were moving into is talking about changing the different particles within an atom the different components so we talked about the fact that if we change our number of protons then we have a brand new element. And that's going to be a good discussion for later on in the year. Now, what we want to look at then is what happens when we change our number of neutrons and what happens when we change our number of electrons. What does that do to the element? How does that change how it behaves, its chemical properties and its physical properties? We always want to consider both aspects. And we're going to start with the neutron. So changes in the number of neutrons results in the formation of what we call isotopes. Iso means same. So these are called isotopes. Now, what is the same about these is their number of protons. So they have the same protons, so they're the same element still. It's just a little variation on that theme. Now, since our neutrons, number of neutrons plus our number of protons is equal to our mass number, if we change our neutrons, we're also changing our mass number. So both of those change. Now, because we have the same protons in everything, what we find is, is that the chemical properties are the same. Sometimes there's some subtle difference in physical properties, but the chemical properties are the same, which is wonderful in science because we use isotopes all the time. I used uh, what's called deuterium oxide in college. So deuterium is hydrogen, but instead of having just one proton and zero neutrons, so that's its charge, remember, and that's its mass, there's deuterium, which is one proton and, two, and a neutron, so it has a mass of two, one, one of the protons, one due to the neutron. And this is called deuterium, and I used that in graduate school back in the olden days. Um, now, other times they're radioactive and they can be used as tracers. So they're very important and there's a couple of ways we can designate them. One way is to put a hyphen afterwards. So this would be carbon 12, carbon 13, carbon 14 would distinguish the isotopes. Now, by saying the word carbon, I don't have to tell you the number of protons because carbon always has six protons. I don't need to tell you that. Um, so often you'll see simply the mass number listed there. We could have also done it this way because we can put the mass in the upper left-hand corner. Don't know why I was writing a 15 there. It's a 14. We put the mass in the upper left and we could continue and put the number of protons in the bottom left. But that's not required because it wouldn't be carbon if it didn't have six protons. Okay. Now, as we start to look into this, the atomic mass that's given on the periodic table is a weighted average. So when we talk about atomic mass, and that's the one that's given on the periodic table for an element, is not a simple average, okay? It is not a simple average. Don't try to do that. You won't get these problems right on your test. It's what we call a weighted average. And you've actually seen weighted averages before. I think that, let me, we've got a little bit of room up here, and I think this formula will make a little bit more sense if I give you an example. In our class, we have tests. Your tests are weighted 40%. Your labs are rated, weighted, I think, 30%. And quizzes and daily are all weighted 30%. So before Skyward, you had to calculate your own grades. 
And so if your test average was a 92 because you've been working really hard and making sure you do all your homework, and your lab average was a 96, sometimes quizzes are a little rough. Let's say you had a tough time that six weeks and it was an 86. Now to calculate that grade, I would not just add these up and divide by three. That's a simple average. For a weighted average, what I would do is I'd take 92 and I'd multiply it by 0.40, 96, and I'd multiply it by 0 0.30, and 86, and I'd multiply it by 0 0.30. Then I would add that up and I would get my weighted average. So I'd take the sum of those. Now, I'm not sure if you caught that, but in going from here to here, all I did was divide by 100. So I went from a total equal to 100 to a total equal to 1. And we usually call that a fraction. So we're going to talk about the fraction of isotope 1. So you take the fraction abundance of isotope 1 times its mass plus the fraction of isotope 2 times its mass plus and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, we have a way of writing that that makes it a little simpler, and we use this symbol here, which says take the sum of, add them all up over all the isotopes. So it's fraction times mass plus fraction times mass plus fraction times mass. Okay. Now, there are times you will be given exact masses, and again, that includes not only the differences between protons and neutron masses, but there's also uh, another factor involved in making those not be quite a whole number. And if they're not available, we will use those mass numbers that are given. Now, what will help us as we start to work towards these calculation is that, again, we saw that just above, but let's fill in your blanks. The sum of percent should be 100. The sum of the fractions should be 1. So you want to whip out your little calculator right now so that we can work one of these. And hopefully you've got your calculator out. Let's take a look at this. I've got chlorine 35. So since it did not give me exact numbers, I'm going to go ahead and use that. So it's 35. Now it's percent abundance is 75.53, so I'm going to divide that by 100, and that gives me the fraction instead. Now, for chlorine 37, it's 24.47%. Again, I'm going to make that the fraction over 100 times 37. Now, it told us to get the mass of chlorine from the periodic table, and I see 35.45. We are going to ask you to take numbers from the periodic table to two decimal places. So don't round any further than two decimal places. So that would be my total, okay? And now, this is, sorry, that's what's on the periodic table. We want to see if that's what we get here. Sorry, I thought it was the other kind of problem. So we've got 0 0.7553 times 35 plus 0.2447 times 37. And lo and behold, we get 30, want to double check my numbers there, yep. 35.49. So certainly within some experimental error, we are fine. This is what is actually on the periodic table, and this is what our calculator, our calculation provides for us. All right, now sometimes there are some other isotopes that have that contribute a very tiny percent that's considered negligible, and that may be why you see some of the differences there. Now, in the next what we're going to do is a, a couple more of these that get a little challenging, but we're going to go ahead and stop this video 
and pick up with two more atomic mass calculations in the next video. I would love for you to try example 4.3 on your own. That's how you'll know whether you're understanding what I just did. Now, example 4.4 is tricky, so you might not be able to get that on your own, but I really do think you can get example 4.3 on your own. So give it a shot before you watch your next video. Until then, this is signing off.